Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a project where we're aiming to build this really large park situated in the Canadian Highlands. And as of today, we're on episode 45. Like I've said plenty of times in the past many episodes, we are really close to coming to the end of October Lake. Not much left to do here, really not much space for any new habitat. But because of that, I thought, how about we include a really tiny animal that's not going to really want a lot of space? So as of today, we're going to be including the black-tailed prairie dog, an animal that we got with the North America DLC, which came out half a year ago, I want to say. Um, actually, no, it was a bit more recent than that, wasn't it? I can't quite remember exactly when it uh, when we got it, but we did get it at some point. <laughs> and I've never actually used this animal before, and uh, I think it's a great animal, it's super adorable, definitely one of the smallest animals we have available to us right now. I think the only thing that might be smaller is the meerkat, and even then I'm not sure, this might be smaller than meerkat, so who knows. But we had this really nice plot of land right between where the Eurasian lynx is and where the ibex are. And although I thought I'd keep this area quite um, kind of reserved for the European animals, I think the prairie dog fits in really, really well here. And a lot of the park does diverge from like specific themes and stuff like that. And it, it just fits well. So I thought, you know, this would be a great place to include it. And I did a relatively simple kind of habitat for it. You know, it slopes down a little bit in the middle. I did something a bit different in the sense that the habitat itself uh, it's actually circular, it's more like a ring shape. And in the middle there's a big planter with a tree in it, which the animals can't actually access. So I thought it gave like quite an interesting shape to the habitat, gives them a bit of like a space to run around and they can kind of make the burrows here and there and it, it looks pretty cool I think. Here I'm just making the outside bits and uh, while we're doing this, I would like to talk a little bit about the prairie dogs. You know, I love talking about the animals. And sometimes when I like forget to do it in a video, it feels really weird for me. Like uh, we did an Ever Set Point episode recently where I did the fallow deer, and when I like uh, like edited the video, I was suddenly realizing like, oh, wait a second, I didn't even talk at the, about the fallow deer at all, which is such an odd thing for me because I really like these, like like talking about the animals. That's one of my favorite parts of making these videos. So like, such a weird thing for me to just forget one. So no worry at all. Today we're going to talk plenty about the black-tailed prairie dog, which is very adorable and tiny and very, very cute. These guys are big colony animals. Well, they're not big. They, they live in big colonies, I mean. And when I say big colonies, I mean huge. There is a chance that, um, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of this, but basically there was a, a study once that looked at a colony of prairie dogs in Texas, and these colonies are called towns. And this specific colony covered nearly 25,000 square miles or 64,000 kilometers, uh, square kilometers. And in that prairie dog town, there was something like 400 million prairie dogs. And that's not 4 million, that's 400 million. That is like the population of the United States of America. Uh, well, a bit more than the population of the United States of America when it comes to humans. And like, that is, that is a lot of prairie dogs. <laughs> so as you can imagine, they're definitely not on the endangered species list. They are of least concern, thankfully, which is really nice. They are rodents, uh, and they are very, very small. They, well, as far as rodents go, they're medium-sized. You know, like, rodents, of course, vary from, like, the really tiny mice all the way up to, like, capybara size. These guys are kind of in between. They're, like, a nice, like, you could pick them up. They're like human baby size, maybe? Well, lighter than a human baby. I don't really know how much human babies weigh. Well, you know, like how... Why are we talking about human babies? These guys are adorable and small and cute. They weigh somewhere between two and four pounds. Um, and yeah, like I said, they live in huge colonies. But within these colonies, and um, they live underground, by the way, they make these burrows. And they do that in the game too, which is really cool. But uh, within these colonies, they actually have smaller groups, uh, usually comprised of one male, um, something like four or five females, which is what we have here, which is one male and a few females, and usually a few pups as well. I'm not sure they're called pups. I don't know what the babies are called. Um, I imagine it would be pups, but I know sometimes they have like very specific names, which I'm not familiar with. Um, juveniles, that's a safe word, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they're really cool. I, I, I think they're super interesting as animals. Um, 
the burrowing nature of them is pretty cool. And their burrows aren't actually super deep. They only burrow something like um, maybe 60, 60 inches or so into the ground, which is something like six feet or so. Is that six feet? Less. Five feet, maybe. Roughly five feet into the ground. And then they like spread out really widely. And uh, lots of studies have actually been done on prairie dogs to see like what their ideal environment is. And it's really crazy how specific people have got like with these uh, studies. Like they found out the optimal area for a prairie dog it has vegetation between 3 and 5 inches tall. And a hill which is of a slope of like 2 degrees to 5 degrees which is so specific. But apparently that's optimal for them so that they can detect predators and communicate with other prairie dogs. Just so interesting. But yeah, that was me talking about prairie dogs for a little bit. It was really fun learning about these. I love learning about new animals like this. Like, I always knew about prairie dogs as a concept, but like, learning about their kind of ins and outs, their, the fact that they, you know, create burrows which have like, you know, millions of, well, no, not within that same burrow, but you know, like they have colonies of millions of prairie dogs. That is just insane. So crazy. But very, very cool and really fun to learn about. So really, really glad to could, like know a little bit more about them. And I hope you enjoyed learning about them too. Here I'm creating a little shelter for them. Uh, nothing too fancy here. Just a little ramp uh, for them to get up and into this area. And of course they can use it as a shelter. But more than likely they will be forming burrows most of the time. In the game that's what they do as well. They form these lovely little burrows to dig underground. Uh, it's not like the big burrow that the badger uses. These are more like... They build them themselves, which is something the meerkats can do too, which I quite like. It's a really cool mechanic. But yeah, little like kind of like, I wouldn't say like a ramshackle. It's actually like, you know, it's something that would be well built, but nothing too fancy because they just wouldn't necessarily need it unless they just happen to want to rest in the middle of the day or something. Nice little sage green. Well, I think sage green is more of a, a dull green, I guess, roof. <laughs> I've been obsessed with the color sage green recently. Like if I had a house... I would paint the walls on the inside sage green, such a beautiful colour. But green in general is my favourite colour and I like most shades of green. I mean, except for some shades of green. Like, there's some which I'm not like super big on. But generally, I like most shades of green. They're pretty cool. Um, that's entirely off tangent. But yeah, you can see here there's the planter in the middle now with some mulch in it. I'm going to put one of the cork oak trees in there. I really like the new cork oak trees. They blend in so well with all the other foliage in the game. But also, you know, I just like that they're a really nice kind of like feature, you know. They're not like a tree that blends in very well in a forest, but on its own, it does stand out really, really nicely as a feature. And that's why it's so good for a planter like this. Here I was trying to figure out whether, you know, I could find something to be an extra shelter. But I gave up on that idea and instead gave them lots of logs. The logs will act as kind of like... You know, little barriers to give a few more different height elevations and stuff like that. And then I add some mulch like that. But also, you know, just to provide some variation and some enrichment for the animals as well. I think it ends up looking quite nice. And of course, towards the end, we're going to start putting in vegetation and a bit more rocks. Uh, thankfully, it seems like in... I don't know when this happened. It might have been one of the more recent updates. Um, the I remember I had some issues with like the diamond leaf willow bush and the... Uh, one of the other bushes. It seems to be fixed now. They they stopped distorting. They look quite good now. And of course using loads of the periwinkle leaves because they look so good. Love those periwinkle leaves. Uh, but all the bushes seem to be working fine now. I remember they were having a bit of an issue where they were distorting in game. But as you can see, uh, the white sage bush the, um, and the diamond leaf willow are working great. Which is a good thing because the zoo relies far too much on them. But it looks really good. And uh, I think the habitat ends up looking really nice, very simple and very chill. And I was really happy with this. Like I said, guys, October Lake is coming up to an end soon. We're not far off. I might do like um, one long video at some point, just doing all the tidying up because there's a lot of like little things we need to do around the park, like put up signs and stuff, put up lights. Maybe I'll do like one long video of me just doing that. Um, but there'll probably be a few more habitat stuff. Uh, I can't, maybe not a few more habitats, maybe one or two. And then we'll start doing some extra stuff, like I want to build a hiking trail and stuff. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyways, thanks so much guys for watching. I hope you all have a lovely week. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!